Hinamoto was once a land ruled by humans, until one day, suddenly, the Kishin descended from the sky and took over. All the lords and warriors fell one after the other, and eventually, only one group of warriors remained, who were courageous enough to keep fighting against them. Until today, they are known as the Band of Bushi. In present days, everyone worships the Kishin blindly, except from a minor apprentice named Musashi. In the mining school, everyone praises him for being the best out of all the students, so he always pretends to be happy. At school, they are all taught that the Bushi are violent people, who once destroyed the world. However, Musashi knows this is a lie, since his friend named Kajiro, is the son of a former member of the Bushi. The father tells them stories of how the Bushi are trying to defeat the Kishins and reclaim human freedom. So, Musashi and Kajiro then make a vow to form their own Bushi band. In the present, Musashi visits Kajiro, who asks him what he wants. He reveals that although he is officially becoming a miner the next day, he still wants to fight the demons with his weapon, as they always promised back in their childhood. Kajiro then discourages him, since Bushi are discriminated against and he adds that he is better off living just an ordinary life. So Musashi decides to prove how serious he is. In town, Kajiro is ostracized because he is the son of a bushi. On the day of the entrance ceremony, Musashi's class are all shown where they would serve the demon masters. However, once inside, they soon discover that the demons are ruthless, and they are to become slaves all their lives, and would be eaten if they disobeyed. Musashi sees this as an opportunity to fight, but his weapon has been confiscated. He then notices a mining axe which he uses to confront the monster who beat him up ruthlessly. His persistent tenacity is all for nothing, as the demons are too strong. As he is about to be eaten, Kajiro shows up just in time to save him. He scolds Musashi and hands him his properties which were left behind. Just then, a furious demon dash at them. So using the technique from his notebook, he uses the floor to launch himself like a vortex to slice the demon. As the other demons transform, they are able to defeat them together as they deepen their bond. Just then, a sign of a Kishin descending is shown in the sky. On their ride, called a Kaitsu Mount, they head towards the Kishin. As they go, Kajiro reveals he isn't all that enthusiastic about becoming a Bushi, so Musashi tries to motivate him. They find that the Kishin is a small creature, so Musashi easily cuts it in two. However, it regenerates instantly. The Kishin loyalists then arrive with metal offerings, which the Kishin eats and totally transforms into its massive giant form. In the chaos, Musashi falls unconscious. The Kishin wants to eat Kajiro's sword but even then, he doesn't let go of it no matter what happens. As he is dragged, he recalls hating the sword because it meant he was a Bushi. But even so, his father told him never to let go of his sword which is the pride of a Bushi. No matter what, he doesn't let go of the sword but eventually, he is overpowered and the Kishin swallows it whole. On losing the sword, he gets frustrated. Musashi then leaps and begins climbing up the Kishin. He starts digging for Kajiro's sword earnestly, as he avoids the Kishin's attack. As the Kishin's stomach collapses, he falls inside so everyone thinks he's dead. However, he comes out with Kajiro's sword in hand. As they rejoice at their first achievement, everyone is alerted of an incoming fortress belonging to a band of Bushi. They descend flashily on their Kaitsu Mount and spring into action immediately. The leader of the Bushi comes to tell them they should leave the dangerous place so they inform him they already slew the Kishin. He then points their attention to the Kishin who is now recovering. He tells them they would take care of the now rampaging Bushi. But even so, Musashi is annoyed that they are interfering with their prize. Although Kajiro dissuades him, he runs head on into battle. Meanwhile, Captain Takeda Neatora, of the Takeda Band, returns to his group where they prepare to defeat the Kishin. Musashi continues his assault on the Kishin, but his effort is fruitless as it just keeps regenerating. So he is pulled back into the Takeda Band's base. Neatora reveals that the Kishin would keep regenerating and that it takes the contribution of an entire band to put one down. He tells Musashi to give up on his dream since his strength is inadequate. However, Musashi doesn't plan to give up so he breaks free from his restraint and heads back into battle. At the same time, the Bushi are in formation as they prepare to begin their attack on its core. When Musashi gets to their location, he uses a technique to make the mountain crumble and thus disrupt the Bushi's formation, which eventually makes their attack miss. As he heads in, Kajiro informs him he has to cut the Kishin's horn, so he quickly slashes at the horn of the Kishin, but he is shocked as his weapon shatters immediately. Meanwhile, the Kishin prepares to fire at Musashi, so Neatora shows up and slices the horn like a knife through butter. As the Kishin disintegrates, the Bushi members absorb its powers in the form of shining dust particles. Later, Captain Neatora assures the people of their protection, since he slew their Kishin. However, the elders accuse them of pointlessly resisting the demons. They add that it's been 150 years and the Bushi have not been able to drive away the Kishin, 
Rather, they kept fighting and dragging innocent people into the conflict. On hearing this, Neatora calmly assures them that the Kishans would be annihilated and freedom will return in his generation. Before they depart, they allowed Musashi and Kajiro's effort, despite not being properly trained bushy. But this annoys Musashi, so he throws a tantrum, calling them kill-stealing samurais. In admiration, Neatora hands him a crystal before they leave the scene. At home, they discover the crystal is a compass used in a map to find demons around the province. On the map, they discover that the Kishans are numbered over hundreds and their names are listed. In addition, they find that there's a prophecy of a hero who will unite the land to battle the Kishin. So Musashi goes to meet Neatora who already stated that to be his goal. He tells him that he'll be the one to unite the land instead. The next day, they head out into the outside world for the first time. As they journey, they promise themselves to always get along no matter what happens. But after some days, they run out of fuel and food. They then begin bickering at each other. Later, Kajiro proves himself competent as he can fish. However, Musashi is annoyed and tries fishing too. But his fishing skills are terrible. He returns only to find Kajiro lying down injured on the floor. Just then, a girl attacks him from behind. She asks him to hand over all his valuables, including the kaitsu mount. However, Musashi easily overpowers her with his strength so they continue fighting. It turns out all her attacks are pretty weak. As he is surprised how she beat Kajiro, she plays her feminine card to seduce him. She waits for an opening to use her knife but Musashi still doesn't fall into her trap. Seeing this, she tries to get serious, but suddenly remembers her time is up. So she steals their bike and heads home. At home, she apologizes to her lord, with the excuse that she was able to steal a kaitsu mount. On hearing this, the lord, called Kasame to Hideo, is happy with Tsugumi. The two boys track the bike only to arrive at the Kasame to Ban's entrance. Inside, they find Tsugumi, who shows them where their bike is. They are shocked to find an entire town inside the fortress, so she explains that all bushy fortresses are like that. She adds that the villagers provide all the bushy needs, like weapons and food, right inside the fortress. In town, she reveals she once had a sister who protected her, but she ended up dying in battle. At night, the lord treats the boys to a welcome feast. He then asks that they join his band in clearing the demons in the area, and in exchange, they would share the kaitsu. They tell him they have no idea what kaitsu is, so on hearing this, he is dispirited and calls them useless. He orders Tsugumi to tie them up so they are locked away in a cell. Later, we find that the Lord traumatizes Tsugumi and makes her do his bidding without question. He reveals to her that he plans on mobilizing the entire villagers to fight the next time demons appear. This includes non-combatants like children and aged adults so Tsugumi tries to argue. However, she is unable to go against his will since he is all she has. Later, she goes to the prison and explains to Musashi and Kajiro that the kaitsu is the shining dust absorbed from the Kishans. As she talks, they find that she is struggling to maintain a strong front. They encourage her to speak up, so in her mind, she sobs as she doesn't want the villagers to fight. She then leaves the scene in anguish since she dares not say her feelings out loud. As the demons approach the castle, Kajiro helps them escape the cell so they arrive outside. Inside, the Lord orders Tsugumi to go equip the entire villagers. In tears, she manages to oppose his idea. Although the Lord tries to hit her, he suddenly begins sobbing. He plays a little mind game before threatening to throw her out of his band since she is useless. With this, he succeeds in keeping her in line once more. After he leaves she gains new courage by looking at her sister's photo but still. She can't get the Lord out of her head since she is literally his puppet. As she struggles with herself, the boys arrive at the scene. They encourage her in their own way so she gets her confidence back. Later, they plan on how to save the people from certain death. At the same time, the Lord gives them a speech about self-sacrifice. The villagers freak out but can't escape since his soldiers have the exit blocked. Just then, Tsugumi creates a smoke screen. She then begins talking to convince him to stop the madness. However, he soon figures out she must be stalling for time. But he is too late as Musashi and Kajiro have already put the guards. Surprisingly, the villagers do not run to safety since they are all terrified of him. On seeing this, she decides the only way to stop him is to confront him. The Lord entertains her so the battle begins. Shortly after, the Lord overpowers her since he is the one that initially taught her to fight. He stomps her repeatedly for her insolence while the villagers watch in horror. As he blabs, she spits on his face and rises to continue the battle. This time, they activate their blades to attack each other. As he fires at her, she uses her whip to restrain and force him down while the villagers escape. 
As the demons approach, she resigns herself to perish so her life flashes before her. At that moment, she is rescued by Musashi. Early in the morning, Musashi finds a Kishin stealing Kajiro's sword so he chases after it. He hits its horn but it doesn't even budge. As he chases it, he arrives on a plane full of katanas. He notices a strange man in black who asks him if he wants to borrow a katana. On seeing the Kishin is about to eat Kajiro's sword, he grabs one and immediately, his body begins growing out crystals. He manages to overcome the feeling and use the immense power at the moment to defeat the Kishin. After defeating the Kishin, he begins absorbing its kaitsu but then shortly after, the katana shatters. As the man tells him not to worry about the broken sword, a comrade of his appears saying they have to leave. The man is shown to have a fetish for kaitsu blades so his comrade apologizes and soon after, they leave. Just then, Kajiro and Tsugumi arrive at the scene but Musashi then notices all the katanas have disappeared. Moving on, he then tells them what happened but they don't believe him. Afterward, Tsugumi informs them they need to get their own kaitsu blades which are the only thing that can destroy a Kishin's horn. On hearing this they had to purchase a kaitsu blade. The group then arrive at a trade center specifically meant to purchase bushy-related goods. While eating, it is when they're asked for the name of their band. It dawns on them that they forgot to give it a name. With that, Tsugumi then reveals they have to choose a captain to give the group orders. So Musashi suggests it should be given to Kajiro, since he doesn't have a family name. Moreover, as seen, the captain's family name is also the name of the band, so Kane Maki should be their band name too. With that, they reach an agreement. Shortly after, it is time for the Kaitsu Blade auction. As Kajiro looks around, the headsmith called Asafune Mitsuru tells him to go with any blade he is drawn to. She informs them since it's their first time, they have to go through a rite. With that, everyone positions close to their choice, including Musashi, who goes with a rather plain blade, while Kajiro chooses a blade nobody cares to pay attention to. For the auction, they are all required to grab the sword. As Musashi does, there's a moment before he begins glowing. Everyone else radiates the same thing, so Mitsuru states that they are undergoing the sword trial where the sword would choose its master. When Kajiro grabs his, he is run through by a pulse of intense energy. Thereafter, his life event begins to flash before his eyes. After overcoming his past, the blade accepts him and he gets the blue color. Others also begin to pass with different colors so it is explained that the color signifies the soul of the individual bushy. She adds that there are five colors and blue like his, is normal while red is the strongest. During Musashi's trial, he is faced with a traumatic memory of the day when Kajiro's dad died. He is taken to a void, and in the dark space, he finds a girl, but he cannot hear her speak. As he feels her warmth, she suddenly transforms into a beast and tells him she doesn't need him. At that moment, his whole body is filled with black crystals and the test ends. He then keeps trying over until nightfall but the same thing happens. Mitsuru then informs him those whose souls manifest black cannot wield a kaitsu blade. She explains that there's nothing that can be done just as people can't breathe underwater or survive in flames. So he has to give up on becoming a bushy. As he sits on the ground frustrated, Kajiro and Tsugumi decide to cheer him up. But they are interrupted by a creature that turns out to be a lesser demon. Musashi spaces out since he can't fight the demon. The demon then sends an attack on Musashi's way. However, Kajiro saves him in time. The demons then begin attacking on sight so Kajiro rushes to defend the people and is able to easily defeat the demons with his newly awakened power. Musashi has no choice but to watch as everyone battles the demons along with Kajiro. Later, everyone praises Kajiro for his contribution along with Tsugumi so Musashi eventually feels left out and lonely. The rest of the warriors head to continue the battle in the mountain but Musashi stays behind as he laments on his failure. As he suddenly remembers how he used a kaitsu blade before they got here, the man in black arrives. He reveals he saw everything that happened and that Musashi should join him since he too has a black crystal. While in tears, he reveals how happy he is to find Musashi, who can house the black stone which is known to hinder people from using a kaitsu blade. He adds that there's a way to fight despite being rejected in the blade trial. This is by accepting his past and his feelings so he can become very strong. To demonstrate, he uses his blade to create a massive hole in the ground. He then tells Musashi to grab a blade which will make him turn into an incredibly strong kaitsu blade. On hearing this, he freaks out saying he doesn't want to be a sword but the man in black doesn't understand why. He then threatens to turn Musashi's friends into sword materials too. So Musashi loses his cool and is tossed into the hole. As the group of bushi moves up the mountain, Tsugumi asks Kajiro to slow down. She then asks him if it's okay for Musashi to be left alone. So Kajiro explains he should overcome his weakness and bounce back on his own. So she thinks maybe Musashi has inherited a special power and that is why he is facing a time of difficulty. Kajiro then decides to reveal Musashi's origin. He explains that his parents were normal farmers like everybody else in the village. Although he adds that during his childhood, 
Musashi was the only villager who didn't despise him for wielding a sword. He treated him like a friend and this is because his parents strangely didn't have any problem with associating with a bushi. On hearing this, Tsugumi is still confused why the Kaitsu blade rejected him. Later, the man in black called in Yukai Shiro is met by his pupil named Nanao. As they converse, he reveals that he has found the obsidian goddess inside Musashi. Meanwhile, Musashi continues to fail in a seemingly unending pit so he has no choice but to use the blade which begins crystallizing his body. As he struggles to climb out, he hears a voice that says she can't allow that. The crystal then overwhelms him so he falls into the lava. Once inside, his consciousness is taken to another dimension where he finds the obsidian goddess is keeping him hostage. She reveals he is too weak so she grabs him, and immediately, he starts witnessing his past. Here, his parents died and he was scorned since his family was friendly to a bushy. He was forced to live with some relatives on the condition that he must not do anything. When he asks why the bushy are hated, he is beaten for blasphemy. They tell him not to ever leave the house so no one would know they are harboring him. They also tell him not to talk, no matter what happens. However, one day, his uncle forgot his lunch so he went to give it to him. On seeing him, the villagers lose their cool and he is beaten again. After living a life of loneliness, sadness, and neglect for a while, a woman tells him to show his loyalty by throwing a stone at a bushy. Although he knows him as Kajiro's dad, the pressure on him was overwhelming so he threw the rock and cursed him too. From that moment, the goddess decided that he is unworthy to wield a kaitsu blade since he sees everything as a means to an end to survive and feel wanted by his friends. She reveals she is showing him the memories to break his will. This is because if he goes out to fight the way he is, she would be captured by the enemy, so she wishes they stay hidden forever. At the mountain peak, they find that the Kishin has already been slain since its head is missing. But Tsugumi argues that it might still be alive since it hasn't turned into kaitsu particles. As they begin searching for its horn, Shiro then appears claiming he slew the Kishin. He then begins heading towards Kajiro so the other bushy stops him to demand he shows them where the Kishin's head is. However, he turns and slays a man thus revealing he only came to steal their blades. Everyone then calls him the Sword Hunter and prepares to attack him with all their might. But still, he stops their attacks and displays his godlike powers which cause the survivors to tremble in fear. He then moves to attack Kajiro since he heard his name from Musashi. Meanwhile, Musashi is almost transformed into black crystals but then, he is drawn out of the lava. Outside, it turns out he didn't transform totally which was what Nana thought. Remembering his friends might be in danger, he rushes towards the mountain. He recalls feeling mortified after throwing a stone at Kajiro's dad. Later in the cold, he goes to apologize to Kajiro's father but instead, he is told to let go of his guilt since he once saved Kajiro from depression. He encourages Musashi and offers to let him live with them. After that, Musashi found a family which filled the void in his heart. At the mountain, Shiro continues annihilating everyone present. He then targets Kajiro. On seeing this, Kajiro makes himself bait to save the others. He draws his blade and attacks Shiro but he easily nullifies his attack and sends a ground-splitting strike which puts him down instantly. As he is about to terminate Kajiro, he suddenly stops because he is shocked to see Musashi. The group is happy to see him although he tells them he still can't use a kaitsu blade yet. Nano then shows up and admits to helping Musashi unknowingly. However, Shiro isn't mad because he is anticipating how the goddess would act next. As Nana charges her attack, the group gives up hope, so Musashi helps strengthen their resolve. With that, they are hyped to fight together as a band. But then, the mood intensely changes as Nana reveals her seven-bladed kaitsu blade. She then begins attacking with her multiple blades while everyone tries to avoid each of them. Musashi then propels himself with the wall and closes the distance between them. However, she easily counters his move. They then regroup to plan a new strategy to break her weapons. Soon after, they spring to action again so Nano tries to figure out their plan. However, Musashi and Tsugumi flee behind Kajiro. Since Musashi is the main target, she sends her blades to him without hesitation. And so Tsugumi uses her whips to hold them in place as planned. After that, Musashi shatters one of her blades. Although they get more motivated, Nana still brags about her blades. However, Shiro interrupts the fight. The group thinks they are going to fight together but in reality, Shiro looks down on her, stating there's no way he would ever fight along with her since she is a weakling. He then makes a blade ring so Tsugumi is shocked that he hasn't even used his kaitsu blade's power which everyone relied on until now. As he swings his sword, everyone is surprised that nothing happens. But then, a barrier forms around the mountain and as they panic, the entire mountain is suddenly inverted. Everyone begins falling to their death, while some people manage to hold on to the roof. On seeing survivors, Shiro then begins cleaning up the trash. He reveals that he isn't like other bushy who have to band together because they are weak like insects. As Kajiro disagrees, he gets pissed and makes everyone drop. As they begin falling, 
Time suddenly stops and the goddess speaks to him again saying she has stopped time for his sake. She reveals that Shiro is an enemy who wants to kill Musashi to obtain her powers. She then decides to use her remaining strength to ensure that he survives. But Musashi refuses since he doesn't want to be the only one to survive while the others die. She gets convinced by his argument to save his comrade so she entrusts her powers to Musashi and reveals she would display them through his body. As time starts flowing again, she uses a black crystal to draw everyone's blades together. She does this by summoning the energy of all the kaitsu blades present. The goddess then appears and confronts Shiro. She takes his blade and turns the mountain back to normal. She then asks Shiro's group to attack her. As Nano attacks, she repels her blades. She explains to Kajiro that people with black crystals have the power to attract or repel blade energy. She adds that people like Musashi don't understand this phenomenon and fail to use any kaitsu blade. She then reveals her powers are fading since she materialized in the real world so she has to go back to sleep and wrap the battle up quickly. She urges Kajiro to protect Musashi when she goes back to sleep and with this, the battle resumes again, with Shiro begging her to take his side. Although she refuses, she then summons the energies of the bushi available and then she combines the different energies all together. Before she attacks, she reveals to Musashi that Jisai, Kajiro's dad, was her former vessel before he died. She urges Musashi to make sure he doesn't die no matter what. As she combines the entire energies together, she swings at Shiro, a brutal attack that disintegrates everything and levels the mountain in its path. After that, Musashi returns back to his normal form. As the sword he used breaks, Mitsuru states that that is what happens when a blade channels too much energy. As they thank him for saving their lives, they offer to make a new blade for him. Meanwhile, they notice a hole in the Kishin's body missing. It is revealed that thanks to his technique, Shiro managed to escape alive along with the Kishin. After the battle, a special funeral for Bushi is conducted using their kaitsu blades mounted on the ground. The next day, Musashi decided to take the sword trials again. So everyone murmured hoping he succeeds this time. Sugumi then notes he is trying with the same sword he has been failing with. However, Mitsuru reveals that it is the best blade available. When it's time for the trial, Musashi gives a heartwarming speech that inspires everyone in the crowd and then he picks up his blade which glows bright red this time. Everyone is then hyped because Musashi's color is bright red which is said to be the strongest color. Later, away from the crowd, Musashi informs Kajiro of his visions. He tells him that his father might have a connection to the goddess however, Kajiro has no idea about it. So they rack their heads and surmise that, since Jisai had a kaitsu mount, he must have been part of a band somewhere. With this discovery, Kajiro is troubled that he knew nothing about his father. After everyone departs, Kajiro arrives with a map of the country. As they look through, Kajiro decides they will go east. On their journey, the group finds themselves lost in a swamp, so Kajiro and Tsugumi bicker. Musashi then offers to ride the bike which is being towed. As he rides it, he ignores the pair who seem like they are scheming. After a while, he finds their silence now awkward so he discovers they have been captured by a swamp demon. He notices someone else has also been captured so he unsheathes his sword and moves to aim for its horn. On locating it, he manages to break it, thus defeating the demon. As everyone breaks free from the vines, Musashi runs to free the last captive who turns out to be a pretty lady. She points his attention to his injury so Musashi tells her it is a scratch from when he saved her. On hearing this, she thanks him. Shortly after, a man named Chamberlain runs to her aid and addresses her as a princess. She is then introduced as the daughter of the head of Saruwatari Bushi. Mikairu. It is revealed that they are on their way to Haramaport where numerous bands of Bushi have gathered for a significant battle. As they accompany the princess, Musashi is worried that she looks upset and uptight so he tries to make her talk. However, she doesn't respond to any of his questions. Instead, Chamberlain cuts in to reveal that they are heading to the port after being summoned by the leader of the Yusugi Alliance which they are a part of. Along the way, they get into a bumpy road which causes Musashi and Mikairu to fall off. Luckily, she uses her kaitsu blade to make them float in the air. She apologizes for ignoring him stating she doesn't know how to interact with other people. She suggests that they should go with them to the port since their original destination is an island which is a kishin itself. She explains that this kishin was the first one to appear in Hinamoto. It rained destruction and thus humans stopped fighting against its overwhelming power. They started worshipping the kishin and mining ore for it which it consumed and eventually became so large. Chamberlain then reveals that the alliance wants to defeat that said kishin. He sounds positive since the leader of the band has gathered a powerful force for this sole purpose. After Mikairu leaves, they decide to reevaluate their journey. On the map, Tsugumi notes it carries a seal of the Yusugi band which means Kajiro Dad was part of the band. 
Meanwhile, at the port, different bands have already assembled in respect to the alliance. Elsewhere, Nano who is shopping is contacted by her black crystals. After securing a location, she joins a meeting of a group of eight. Shiro reveals he has located the obsidian goddess so they plot how to keep it out of the hands of the other bushy. Kajiro's group then heads to the port to find out more about his late father. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's anime recap. Please remember to drop a like and subscribe so you never miss another video. Until next time guys, take care.